So hello everybody. As many of you know, for those who have been following me on social media, for the last month or so, even more, I have been working on this giant marble monument and been carving all day up to 11 hours a day. And because of that, I've had a lot of time to listen to podcasts, you know, the YouTube sometimes plays and I'm just listening and sometimes it ends up on these, you know, it autoplay goes on and I wound up listening to a podcast between Joe Rogan and Douglas Murray. Some of you might have heard this podcast in which they talk about all the things that Douglas Murray is interested in. But during the discussion, they start to talk about Bible stories and Christianity and they start to make fun of different aspects of uh, the Bible. And so I thought I would look into at least one of those stories to maybe you know, I like Douglas and I like Joe, but I, maybe I can help all of you understand this story in particular. It's the story of Elisha and the two mother bears that kill the 42 youths. This is Jonathan Peugeot. Welcome to the Symbolic World. So in this discussion, <clears throat> Joe Rogan and Douglas Murray start talking about um, the uh, the idea of wool and linen and how it's so you know disturbing that uh, in the Old Testament you can't mix the two types of cloth. By the way, for those who want, you can check out. I actually made a video on that sub subject trying to explain why it's important. So you can check that out. I'll probably put a link of that down below in the description. But that's not what I want to talk about now. What I want to talk about is the story of Elisha. Which was the book where the guy um, called upon the she-bear to kill the children who were mocking his baldness? Do you know about that one? No. My favorite, especially as a bald guy. <laughs> In that story, Elisha, with Elijah, who is his master, uh, there are two prophets, and Elijah is going to go away. And in order to go away, they cross this river. They cross the Jordan River. And then Elijah is taken up into heaven. And as Elijah is taken up into heaven, then Elisha receives these garments of Elisha and receives a double um, take, a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. And these garments are these woolly garments, these hairy garments that the prophets wore. Let's call them these garments of skin. And so Elisha gets these garments. And with the garments, he hits the Jordan, and the Jordan separates into two, and then Elisha crosses over. And then on the other side, as he's moving about, I think it's the, the second story. There's a story just before that, but the second story after that is this story, where a bunch of youths come up to him, and they start to mock him. And they call him Baldy, and they're saying, Hey, Baldy, get out of here, Baldy, get out of here. And because of that, Elisha turns to them, gets angry, curses them. And then these two mother bears come out and they devour all these young men. It says devour 42 of them. So I can understand, Joe and, and uh, Douglas, if you ever listen to this, I can understand why you find that story strange. But I would say you have to be very careful. And I hope that, you know, I think this podcast was a bit old. And I think now that you've... Um, been listening to Jordan Peterson a little bit more. Hopefully you'll have a little bit more reserve when you start making fun of these stories. And so I am going to explain the story to you. <laughs> now, to understand the story, just like most stories in the Bible, you have to understand the patterns. You have to understand that this story of Elisha <clears throat> and the she bears is a repetition of patterns which were there before. Their repetition of, uh, I will show you one of the examples of this pattern. Now, Noah, he comes to the end of a world, you know, and uh, Enoch is taken up into heaven, just like Elijah is taken up into heaven. And after that, Noah has to cross an expanse of water, just like Elijah had to cross the Jordan. <clears throat> Noah doesn't use the garments of skin of animal skins but he has a boat full of animals which is symbolically very similar 
And so Elisha uses these garments of animal skins to cross over the water. And so what he's doing is he's actually in this moment of transition. He's crossing over to a new world, a new beginning, you could call it. But in the new beginning, in this transitional space, a lot of things can happen. A lot of crazy things can happen. And when Noah crosses over, after that, there's a story where just after he crosses the, the, the flood, Noah is, takes his clothes off, gets drunk, and then he's lying there naked you know, in his tent, and his son comes in and sees that he is naked. And then he goes to tell his brothers. Now, what's implied in the story is that he's making fun of his father or he's criticizing his father for being naked in the tent. And then because of that, the son of Noah who saw him is cursed and he becomes like a cursed people in the world. And you think, huh, well, that's strange. Well, you can see, first of all, you first of all have to see the pattern. Now, notice the pattern. Elisha crosses the waters with these garments of animal skins. Then, when he's on the other side, he is criticized for something that he lacks. He's criticized for his nakedness. In this case, the fact that he's bald. The fact that you can see his head. And so, this notion of criticizing what... The the notion of exposing the nakedness of someone. This is an important theme in the Bible. The idea that when you do something, certain things that you can do will expose someone's nakedness, will expose their vulnerability, will will expose their weakness. And the danger in doing that is there's a, a process, there's a pattern by which that will then turn against you and that will create something like a curse against you. The curse of the mother bear that comes out and eats and eats them, you can really imagine it as this kind of grumbling feminine uh, energy that comes up and then devours you like a, like a, like a sea monster coming out and eating uh, Jonah or you know this idea of, the, of this chaos kind of pulling you down, let's say. And so that's what it refers to. Now, the reason why it's she bears, the reason why it's animals has to do with this idea of covering and this idea of the animal skins, the idea of the animals in the ark, this idea that we cover ourselves with, um, let's say, these animal desires that we have around us. They, they act as a way to protect ourselves in the world. Everybody understands that. So, you know, you're hungry. You have sexual desire. All these things are there to help you survive in a, in a difficult world. And, but they're also the thing that can pull you down. You know, so if you let yourself go too much to your hunger, then you become fat. You become, you know, you're, you're taken over by that passion. If you let yourself get taken over by your sexual desires, then you become obsessed with that and you, you, you lose your focus. You can get a disease, you you know, everything about letting yourselves go to these passions that kind of eat you up and drag you. And so the danger of exposing someone else's nakedness, of exposing someone else's lack, is that then you will become, you will be eaten by the thing that you are criticizing them for lacking. And so you see that ch- the children criticize the nakedness of the nakedness of Elisha, and then they're eaten by these animal passions. You could imagine that they're eaten by Elisha's garments of skin, those skins that he used to cross over, those skins that he used to survive in the world. Now, you still, I know a lot of you will think, "What does it mean? What are you talking about? What is this? What does this have to do with anything?" Well, we are going through that. Right now, we are experiencing exactly this story of Elisha and the 42 youths are being eaten right now. It's called the Me Too movement. <laughs> uh, some people in Hollywood, some actors, thought it uh, on, took it on themselves and Hollywood in general to criticize certain behaviors, to poke at the nakedness, at the weaknesses of others in high power. And then what happened? Those very people who accused others of that weakness, then all these 
we, women appeared and started to say, yeah, but you too. You, you are guilty of the thing that you're accusing me of. And those people got devoured by their own weaknesses. And so that which we hide, we have these, these, these sins, we have these passions that we hide for a reason. You know, there are many reasons why we hide our passions. One is so that society can continue. One is that because we're ashamed of them. One is that because we're trying to, hopefully, trying to get away from these passions. But when you expose someone else's passions, then you run into the danger that those passions will then devour the person who's criticizing. You know, and you see it. It's so funny because it's a trope that everybody understands. We've seen it. We've seen even people, for example, we've seen the, the, the gay lobby use that exact structure. They'll say things like, if you criticize homosexuality, if you're openly critical to people who are gay, it probably means that you secretly have that desire in you and that you will give in and be eaten up by that desire. And then they can point to different conservative pastors or priests or whatever who are found, you know, in some some gay orgy or something. And so and so that is the structure of this story. Um, and I think I think it, it's a it's something that once you understand the pattern, you can see, first of all, the pattern itself repeats itself in the Bible. There are other places where this same pattern repeats itself. But then once you understand what it means, then you can understand that understand that knowing this pattern can avoid a lot of problems in your life. And so I would say to all of you, just before you casually mock a story in the Bible, be very careful because there's probably actually certainly more there than what you thought at the outset. So I hope you enjoyed my discussion of Elisha and the two bears. Um, if you want to go down this rabbit hole, I have talked about this before several times on my channel. If you watch a video uh, called Adam and Eve and Batman, you will see that I discussed this very pattern, how Batman uses his giving in to fear at the death of his parents to then turn fear against the criminals and destroy them by the very uh, thing that exposed his own weakness and his own vulnerability. So this is a pattern that you can find all over the place. And so thank you again for uh, listening and watching. Don't forget my new website, www.thesymbolicworld.com. If you like what I'm doing, please consider supporting me on Patreon, and I will see you soon.